Welcome everybody. Uh, we're here today with our CFO, Javon Cannon, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about the state of the economy, some stock markets. Uh, a lot of countries have been doing stimulus plans and, and some updates on that. So, Jay, obviously we, anybody who's turned on the TV and looked at news, um, whether it's local markets, global markets, everything has been a little bit in turmoil uh, recently. So can you give us a little bit of perspective on what's going on? Sure. So as many people know, you know, what's been happening over the last two months, uh, the coronavirus has been impacting the globe. Uh, as we've seen the rate of cases increase globally and the rate of deaths increase globally as well, many governments around the world are taking lots of actions to try to stem the spread of this disease. And so those actions generally are consistent across the countries in the form of either limiting travel, either in and out of the country, uh, closing certain businesses, uh, as well as you know, shutting down the whole society and ordering people to stay at home. And as a result of that, many businesses are going out of business and going bankrupt. Uh, people have lost their jobs and supply chains are being disrupted. And as so, as you come out of all those actions, the economy is beginning to slow down, mainly because people aren't buying as much, people aren't traveling, people aren't going to the movies, people aren't going out to restaurants. And so, the end result of all that is a lack of confidence among investors about all those businesses, how they're going to survive going forward. So we went through a period of time where things were booming or consumer confidence was up, and this Correct. is kind of a flip of consumer confidence. Yeah, that's exactly right, Timothy. At the beginning of the year, I think most people felt like we were headed into a strong year, especially coming off of a little bit of a slowdown in the economy last year. and. This whole coronavirus and the COVID-19 impact has basically turned everything upside down. Uh, the stock market, you know, around the world, all the indices have seen severe drops or declines. The S&P 500, which is primarily the U.S. market, but is an indicator of basically global uh, economy, is down 25% since the peak at the end of late February. And mm -hmm. that 25% decline translates into about $7 trillion of market capital that the, market, that the economy has seen because of that. And put that a little bit into perspective, if you go back to 2008, 2009, during the Great Recession, over that period of about 11 months, the S&P 500s fell about 40%. However, that 40% decline back then, almost eight years ago, only represented about a four and a half trillion dollar loss of market share or market cap. So we've already seen a much greater dollar impact in the last six weeks than we did in an 11 month period during 2008, 2009. So everybody wants to predict when we're at the bottom. I <laughs> sure. mean, is, is it something that is generally, I'm going to not say call the exact time, but what are the indicators that you look at to see when are things recovering? Are things continuing to worsen? What, sure. what are you looking at? Well, that's a very hard question. I mean, market timing and trying to predict the bottom is a very difficult thing to do. But essentially, as we look at the rate of coronavirus cases as well as the death rate, once we begin to see that peak and start slowing down or declining in the growth or actually negative trending down. And when you see the governments that are all involved in the actions that they've taken begin to lift a lot of those restrictions that I talked about earlier, essentially when we all start going back to normal, living our lives the way it was two plus months ago, I think that's when you'll begin to see the market begin to trend back up at that point in time. So talking about getting back to life as normal, um, at least in the U.S., there's been a big stimulus package um, put out there. Can you talk a little bit about that and then maybe also talk a little bit about what's going on around the globe? What are other countries doing to respond to this? Sure. All, all countries are doing something very similar. The level of magnitude differs from country to country. Um, so, for example, it's very common central banks in most countries are lowering interest rates near to record levels. Then the U.S. interest rate is somewhere between zero and one percent. Uh, we're also seeing central banks also pump money into and liquidity into the financial market so that the banks stay healthy, so they can be able to be there to help lend money to businesses that are struggling. We're seeing uh, 
uh, medical emergency funding being put in place. Uh, if you heard in the U.S., such as the ventilator uh, efforts that the U.S. will be buying ventilators and distributing those to various states. Uh, we're also seeing uh, loans being made to uh, small business and large businesses alike, typically bailout loans into various industries such as the airline industry, the hospitality industry, things like that. And then you're also beginning to see some more individual money being granted. Uh, the U.S. has also done this, and so many of our employees here in the U.S. will be beneficiaries of the $1,200 per person of payments, assuming that your income is not above a certain level. Right. Uh, so a number of things are being done. It's an interesting fact is that the U.S. stimulus packages that have been put forth so far represent about 10% of the U.S. GDP for this year. Obviously, it's an uncertain time. Um, it's also an unprecedented time, at least within the, the recent history. Um, what are you doing as a CFO of Coors Tech to help us look at navigating this time of uncertainty? Sure. So Coors Tech, fortunately, is, serves a lot of essential and critical industries. So all of our plants are operating, albeit at different ways, in order to keep our employees safe. So far in 2020, we're operating very close to our plan, with the exception of our automotive market and our energy and chemicals markets, which have been under global pressure for a while, but have been exacerbated a bit by the coronavirus pandemic. One of the things that I look at as far as from the uncertainty aspect is that we're not exempt from that uncertainty that the rest of the market faces as well. So we've been looking at a lot of different uh, actions that we may take if some of the markets that we participate in start seeing a downturn. Now, first and foremost, our goal is to keep our team, team members on the job working safely. And then secondly, making sure that we maintain liquidity as a company so that we can face and endure these difficult times. You know, we have oh, almost 6,000 employees, and so our monthly payroll is very significant. And so it not only is in addition to serving these essential industries, by keeping our people employed, we also help, help support the economies where we operate in. You know, it's probably these times more than ever do we need to work better together. So. If we look at where this is moving, um, if, if I'm an employee and I get um, a stimulus package mm -hmm. and we move on from this, you mentioned earlier, it seems like things are going to have a maybe, hopefully a revitalization maybe later on this summer or into the fall. Yes, I mean, I think that the, the monetary payments that the government is making is in hopes of helping those individuals that either lost their jobs uh, and try to get them through these next few months as the government or essentially the, the country is going to be shut down in effect. So the money that they're receiving, hopefully if they don't, if they don't need to save it and they need to spend it, that money will go back into the economy as well. Right. Well, that's great, Jay. I really appreciate you taking the time and talking a little bit about the economy. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you all next time. Thanks.